Morgana the Doll Witch, where I take science a little bit of magic to make my dolls their very best selves. And so today, I have Exil. He's here supervising again because we all know I need one. And I'm wearing the chicken mask again because in my video that I did yesterday, I talked about how I had got four new hens. Well, I went out to the chicken yard today to get eggs and there were two baby chicks. I looked around, I found two sneaky hens sitting on about 30 eggs. So I'm gonna have a bunch of baby chicks running around here. And so we're celebrating at the farm because that's just what we do. <laughs> but today we are going to talk about when you would use TPE paste and when you would use the tape primer, okay? And so I will have the link for where I get my primer at. I actually contacted the vendor yesterday and told him that I was, you know, using that I was talking about his product and I was going to use his link. He's very excited about that. Um, I just bought two cans yesterday. They are typically like 11, I think it's 11.95 a can and then 4.95 for shipping. But if you buy more than one can, you get a discount on shipping. So yesterday I bought two cans for $23.90. So definitely um, the more you buy, and I go through this quite a bit, so I went ahead and bought another couple of cans. And so the paste, if you have not watched my video on how to make TPE paste, go ahead, stop, go back, watch that video because sometimes you not, it, you think you're going to use just the primer and you end up needing the paste. And it's really always good to have around anyway. And when you are, the paste and the primer both need to be stored in glass containers. And this is just primer. I just put it in a little small bottle. Um, they need to be kept in glass jars with metal lids because this primer will eat right through plastic. So make sure that you are keeping this stuff stored safely. Um, also, when you're working with this, wear a mask. You can probably hear in the background, I have a fan on and the air, the air conditioner is on, so it's blowing the air. It's actually blowing it all that way because um, try, you wanna do this in a well-ventilated area and keep it ventilated until it's dried, okay? And so, please be safe. I will also put a 3M's data sheet that talks about how toxic this is how to handle this um all you know all those symbols for fire hazard poison all that kind of stuff i will also include that in my in the comment section okay so some things you're going to need besides the primer and the paste you're going to need some paint brushes okay depending on the biggest the wound or the area you're fixing whether what size of paint brush you're going to need plastic wrap you will you depend on the area you use it to kind of close that area you know to keep the area together until it sets you're also going to need rubbing alcohol or hand sanitizer however you keep it or if you just keep it in the bottle um, I like this bottle it's hand sanitizer because it's got a really it's got a good spray nozzle works great you're also going to need some makeup sponges now in my video on supplies or tools equipment and supplies um, I talk about the makeup sponges I use these for cleaning they can be reused because they're supposed to be one one use only but to me that's wasteful and it's putting more crap in the landfill like we need that and so you can I put these in a little bucket put some dish soap in there you know squeeze it out and everything run it through the washing machine Ta -da! you can reuse them about five or six times until they start falling apart and you're gonna need some paper towels now I take my paper towels and I cut them in fourths because you never know how much you're gonna need and best not to be wasteful and so today what we're going to be working on is this little torso I showed this torso in my video on how to make paste I got this on eBay this is about three pounds of TPE or actually it's more than three pounds of TP. I want for 18 bucks on eBay. Now, eventually this this little torso is gonna get chopped up and used for parts and making paste. But today she's gonna be our demonstration model and she, she's having a rough life already. And so what I did is gouged the hole, took a chunk out, that happens, you know, catch it on catch it on the corner or something like that. Part of life. Um 
a grow her a growing cut that happens okay um this is an area i know this is a torso so it wouldn't be that big a deal but if you have a doll that has legs the area is going to move and shift and so that will determine whether the area whether you use paste or primer then i also um cut a slit here in her leg um that happens you might get that um it's on an area that doesn't move like say on the forearm the thigh uh maybe the butt just depends on where out of the butt and how much you're juggling the doll or moving the doll around whether you're going to use paste or or just a straight primer um anywhere where that tpe is not moving because of the, the body right and then i also did a cut under the breast that happens these dolls, some of these dolls got big old boobs, and um, that that's actually a very common area that, that happens. And so this depends whether you use primer or paste depends on the size of the boobs, how much the boob, the breasts are moving around. Um, you have to you have to do a little practice. Use your discretion on this, okay? You could cover a naughty bit so you can't see anything. Alright, so I am going to move the camera down now. I'm just going to be honest with you. This is a one shot, one take shot. And so if I screw up, sorry, I'm just going to bear with me because I can't go back and redo this stuff. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shift the camera and then I'm going to lower it so y'all can see what I'm doing. I might do that a little bit higher and then rotate it around. It's not going to shift very well. Okay. Let's see. It's hoping that this would shift down a little bit more. I don't know why it's not. <laughs> oh well. But you just. So I'll just hold her up if I need to. All right. So when you we're going to start with the gouge, okay? Because that's kind of the area. It's going to take the most time. If you've got a gouge where there's a chunk taken out, you're filling an area in, this is going to, it's going to take some time and you're going to have to do layers, you know, like an onion. If you ever watch Shrek, you, you get, you'll get that reference. And so for that, you're going to use paste. And so I cut this, and I kind of cut a little bit, let's see if I can hold her up. I kind of cut this a little deeper than I meant to because it opens up a lot deeper than I thought it would be. So, what you do, the first thing you do is you clean, okay? Clean, clean, clean. Can't be too clean with this. I'm going to take some alcohol. And spray, 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 spray. Then I'm going to take, I'll take one of them. I think that might be enough. And I'm going to clean the area. You want to get all the crap out of there because if you, if you don't, it's going to be stuck in your doll, right? Want that and since this doll this little torso is going to get chopped up i don't want stuff in there that <laughs> she's going to get chopped up in these paste so i don't want it i don't want any foreign bits in there so i clean it with the paper towel then i go back and I use a makeup sponge and the reason why we use the makeup sponges is because they don't really put off lint and they will catch the lint so spray 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 again That's why I like the spray bottle because it's easier. And you can go to like Dollar Tree, Dollar General, you can buy $1 spray bottles. Um, I have one for oil, I have it for alcohol or the, you know. Also you have, each one of my doll has their own bottle of oil because I every one, every one of them has a different scent. Their oil is scented differently. So I can tell them as part by their smell. I know that sounds weird, but that's just my thing. All right, so that's pretty clean. And so with that, like I said, you're gonna use paste. And this brush should work. Now here's the thing, friends. So to keep your brushes clean, you can use alcohol um, to clean them. Actually, let me clean that again. I always, you gotta keep your tools and equipment clean. I don't know how to, I can't express enough how important it is to keep your stuff clean. Um, when you're working so that you don't get any foreign objects in there. Now, I will also 
like periodically have like put a jar with some alcohol in it and soak my brushes like overnight um, to make sure that all the TPE is out of it because the primer will alcohol will dissolve the primer so also keep that in mind if you're using alcohol to clean your dolls um, make sure I mean once this is dried it's really only just TPE left but there is a bit of this, there is like a, a sticky film that's what it's for. It's, you know, to adhere labels and decals on cars. And so you don't want to break that down. So be thoughtful when you are, um, when you're cleaning an area with alcohol. And I do use alcohol to clean my dolls, like around, you know, the mouths. I kind of do it all over because I'm kind of... OCD about that but that's just me and so I'm gonna use paste now here's what I'll show you about the paste see that it's not for coming off the brush you want it as thick as possible okay now this stuff sets pretty fast that's probably more than I actually need Let's see that back in there and I'm gonna you have to do this layer so I'm gonna open it up as far as it was let me see. I'm going to lower the camera just a little bit. There we go. I'm going to open this up so I can see the very bottom of it. And I'm going to put paste in there. Okay. That's pretty good. And then you just have to go back like every, like, it will set in about four or five minutes. So, and you don't want to do a big thick layer. You just want to do a thin layer, let it dry, go back, add another layer. Now, when you get to the top of it, you're going to want it a little bit, the paste kind of domed over a bit. And the reason why is when this dries, because it dries, remember it dries through evaporation, it's going to suck down into it, right? And so you might even have to go back after it's completely dried and put another layer to smooth it out. Now, when you're doing this, um, after it's you've filled it in, it's not going to be like really smooth. So that's where you would go and use the heated spoon method. Uh, for that, if you want to go and watch my video on how to fix scuffed feet, it's the exact same process. Okay, you're just going to use butane torch. Did I put that where you guys can see it? Yeah, I got a fancy one and a spoon. And this is it. See how thick this spoon is? This is just a, like an eating teaspoon, but it's really thick, heavy duty, because it gives you more working time. Or if you have a small, this is a fake fingernail remover. Ooh, that's kind of dirty, I need to clean that. Um, this is a fake fingernail remover. You could use, for a small area, you could use this. Or some kind of thick metal strip. Something that you can hold that doesn't get hot, because you don't want to burn your hand, because this whole thing, this doesn't get really conducted past this point, which helps. All right, so I've done that, and it just needs a set. There's not anything I can do with it right now. Once that set takes about five, ten minutes to where it's really kind of, you know, it'll be a little, you touch it, it won't stick to your finger. Uh, then you, when you can touch it and it won't stick to your finger, then you can put another layer on it, okay? Um, it, it set, it's already starting to set, so like I said, you got to work pretty quick. Now I'm going to clean my brush off because it's important to keep your brush clean. Even if you're still using like paste in another area, this stuff will gum up on your brush really fast. Now, another area that you would use paste is any place there's movement, right? That's why I cut the growing area because that's very common place. Under the armpit, it's another one. Uh, the, you know, around the elbow, that that area, the knees, uh, down the feet where it flexes, you want, you're going to want to use paste because um, the paste kind of fills it in and gives it some movement. It, it's like a buffer, right? And so you'd use a paste in this area. Now this is just a little torso, so it's not really going to move that much, but you can see let me, see if, let me turn it on its side real quick. It kind of just 
it does kind of flop open. So you want to make sure if at any point that that's not, it doesn't hold together, then you're going to use the, prime, the paste for that. I'm going to go back in here. And I went ahead and cleaned that earlier. So um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put one, kind of a, not a super thin layer, but not a super thick layer on both sides. Press it into, you know, take the brush, push it into the areas. I need to work a little faster. It's going to set on me. And then you're going to push the area together. Now you might see a little bit of, there's a little bit kind of coming up here. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's kind of some squishing up. Wipe it off. Make sponge is good for that. Wipe off the extra. You might have to go back in later and clean, you know, with this heated spoon. Now there's a couple of ways for an area that opens that will not stay closed on its own to set it. Now, that's what the plaster crap is for. What I'd probably do is take and wrap plastic wrap all the way around this puppy to hold that together, right? Um, you still want some where it can get some air in there because, like I said, TPE paste sets through evaporation, and so you don't want the the stuff trapped in there. What I another option is I know this sounds pretty gruesome, using quilting pins. I do quilting, I sew, and so I've got lots of pins, and just stick them in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Step one. This one. And the quilting pins, I get the really, I have the really long ones. And so it's really good for and they won't leave much of a much of a hole. Once it's once it's set and everything. You pull the pins out, a little alcohol, clean it up. When you powder, oil it and powder it, you're not going to see the little pin holes, okay? And so that's how I fix that area. Now, I think I'm going to use this little thing. I'm going to raise this up so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. All right, that worked out really well. Cool. So then we have this cut right here. Okay. Now, if you notice, at rest, it stays closed. You can't even, matter of fact, you can't even really see that it's there, right? Until you spread it. And so those kind of cuts, you can use primer on. You use the straight primer. So let me clean my brush real quick. Let me clean this brush real quick. See, it's already gotten tacky. So. Yeah, I think this brush is about ready to do an overnight oil or alcohol soap. Alright. That's pretty good. So for this hole, it's not, I don't have, a, I didn't cut this very deep. And so, what I will do, clean it, shred that all, make sure there's no gunk, junk on it. Okay, that's pretty good. that is okay that's pretty clean so with that I'm just going to use a straight primer and since this isn't a very deep a very big wound I'm just going to use a smaller brush I think that will work fine this up here just get in the way this brush oh, let, me use a, let me use this brush What you do, put, get my brush, spread it open, all the way open. Now you're going to want to go 
push it down in the deepest crevice. Now, be, don't put too much because this will make the TPE unzip. What I mean that is it will melt. It'll make the hole bigger. So be careful, all right? You put it on one side, put it on the other side. Make sure you've done it down in the um, crevices and then you just hold it closed. Or what I'm gonna do, I'm going to use these quilting pins. And I can do just a little salt light surface and that will hold that closed. Or you can use saran wrap, like I said, you can take and wrap it around there and it works just fine. And so that keeps it closed, leave it alone. So here's, here's the rule of thumb. It starts, see like this, I can go ahead and already put some more pa primer in, or paste in there. Put another layer, like remember, you do it, have to do it in layers, not thick layers, but thin layers. And you just have to, you can go back like every, I mean, it's been what, 20 minutes? Or not 20 minutes, but 10 minutes since we did that. And so about every 10 minutes, put another layer. Check, make sure if it's not sticky, put another layer on there. And yes, that's why I cut these paper towels up because you go through a lot of them because you want to keep your stuff clean. And when you're doing this, you can't just stick the brushes in alcohol because the stuff will still kind of, it kind of coagulates, I like that word, and it coagulates and you still got to clean your brush off, so. All right, so now the last one that we're going to look at is a breast tear. That's a very common. Um, sometimes you'll have this happen in like one of the other orifices. You'll get a tear. Now, I don't have a female doll that I use like that. I don't have, I don't use a female doll like that. Um, so, but if you have blown out vajay day or anus or and you need help with that, I can help you, I can walk you through the process. I'm not gonna be making videos on that, um, but I can walk you through the process to fix it, whether it's a, um, if you have a fixed vag vagina or if you have an insert. Insert, if the insert's messed up, you can order another insert. But if the actual hole for the insert is torn up, I can, I can help you fix that as well, okay? But I won't be making videos on it, so <laughs> sorry. Um, so, torn breast. Now, with that, you can use the primer. Well, I say that you're going to need to use discretion. Now, after you've let it set, I kind of let it, when I've done this, I'm going to, I will let this sit for like 24 hours. Then I'll go back and I'll check. I'll do a little pulls. And if it start, if I see it starting to open up, do it again. Um, like I said, some TPE work, it works, it's weird. Some will work really, it works really easy and some you kind of have to work with it. If you're using the primer and the primer's not setting, go to paste, okay? Um, it just depends on what the TPE composition, because every manufacturer has their own special recipe and uh, some works, some will react differently to the paste and the primer. Okay, so I'm gonna take my little brush. Actually, you know what? I think this brush is gonna be too small. I'm gonna use a bigger brush because it's kind of a deeper hole there. Now, just like with this, now you've gotta be careful. Don't put a lot of pull on it, okay? Just open it up so that you can get to every, uh, every area. And then you put some on the top and you put some at the bottom. Make sure you get into all the areas and you might see it open. That's why you don't want to get too much. Go put it in there and then just close it up. Now, what I'm probably going to end up doing, if I was going to keep this torso, I'd take plastic wrap, wrap it all the way around her torso, you know, around her breast to hold that down. Or, you know, I could do pins well too. Now, Here's the thing about the breast. Depending on the size of the breast, whether or not you're gonna to need to go back in 
whether the, pay, the primer not, might not work. So you might end up having to go back in, check it after, you know, 24 hours, you open it up and you see if it opens back up, then you're gonna have to go with the paste. If your doll is where she, they're flopping around, you're probably gonna wanna use paste because if you don't and it moves, that primer is, what it does, it just melts the TPE together, okay? Melts the TPE so it bonds. And sometimes that bond's pretty weak if there's nothing in between it. And the paste, the TPE that you put in here is the is that kind of go between, right? That matrix that holds them together. And so that's what you know. If you when you get this filled in, like I said, you can use a heated spoon method. You might have to do that here, clean it up a little bit. I would probably, if I'm going to do that, I'd use the little. I use this and just lightly, lightly watch the video on how to fix scuff feet so you'll know how to use these. Okay. Um, oops, let me clean my brushes. I know you're like, lady, please. But it, I'm telling you, and I, you know, on my supply tools and equipment videos or video, I talk about these brushes. You know, I get a multi pack pretty cheap. But you don't want to waste your money. You can get like a 25 pack for six, seven bucks at most at Walmart in their craft department or Hobby Lobby or Michaels. You can get them. I actually typically don't shop at Hobby Lobby, but that's my personal preference because of their political views. And so this is, that's how you do repairs with either using the TPE paste or the primer and so if you have any questions concerns need help with anything leave a comment in or leave leave a message in the comment section I'll get to you um, if you're needing if you have specific things that you're working on or wanting to work on you know make a request I'll, I'll try to try to do that as soon as I as I can once again if we also appreciate if you give us a like and if you, um, we always appreciate for those who choose to, dis to subscribe to our channel. So once again, this is Morgana the Doll Witch where I take science, a little bit of magic to make my dolls their very best selves.